Hail and greetings all, Ragnarok Prepper here. I was out taking a hike and enjoying the sunset when I came across something so common to me that I forgot to make a video about it. And this is the perfect time because now is when you would be gathering this wild edible slash medicinal. I'm pretty sure that most of you will know what this item is, but for those of you who don't, this is an essential, easily identifiable powerhouse to add to your knowledge. Let's check out this right over here. Now, as you can see here and here, and here we have our rose hips. Now these are extremely abundant and very common in the wilds of North America. If you're unfamiliar with the wild rose bush, chances are if you were out hiking or roaming through the woods and you got stabbed and jabbed and twisted up, it was a wild rose bush. Some other common victims may be blackberries and raspberries, but I'm sure you would know the difference between a berry and a rose hip. Now these rose hips are also known as rose haws. They are a reddish, orangish colored, oblong, globe shaped fruit. As you can see, some of them have different shapes, but in general, they're about the same size on this plant. As I said, they're normally reddish, orangish colored. If you do see any green rose hips, they're not ripe yet, and so you don't want to pick those. But also, for anyone confused, rose bushes usually have five to nine leaflets, plenty of thorns all around the plant. I'm fairly confident that anyone can identify these. And they are one of the easiest backwoods foresting items to identify. Normally the wild rose is a five petaled pink to a deep rose colored flower. And what we need to happen is for that flower to form in order for the fruit to be pollinated. And then once that flower falls off, we result in rose hips. Now, rose hips are best harvested in the late fall. The longer they stay on the vine, the sweeter the flavor will be, especially if you get them after the first frost. Now, the problem with this is that rose hips are enjoyed by just about every animal in the forest. Even bears know the benefits of rose hips. Now, there is one thing, though, as a human consuming rose hips that you need to know you do not want to pick them from the vine and eat them directly i'm going to have a picture pop up here of this rose hip that i've cut in half and you can see inside here the seeds well those seeds are wrapped with like thread like pieces and those thread like pieces are known to catch in the throat of the human and down along your gastrointestinal tract, causing irritation and inflammation. Something you definitely want to avoid at all costs, especially in a survival situation. Now, you can also see here, on the end of these, there are some hairs, also known as calyxes, that are protruding from the end of the fruit. If you can see that, there, there you go. Those are actually connected to the threads that are wrapped around the seeds inside. Now, when you harvest the rose hip, they'll just come right off the bush, just like that. And they'll feel hard. And that's okay because you're going to be slicing them open, removing the seeds and the threads, 
and harvesting the outer skin. Now, if you were in a survival situation, you could break them open and then use a bandana or your smog to filter water over them and to wash the threads away. And even when you're processing them at home to use them to make a tea or a jelly, you would do the same thing. You would boil them in the water and then you would want to run it through some cheesecloth or something, a coffee filter, in order to take those hair-like, thread-like projections out of the mixture. Now there are numerous recipes for rose hips. If you do a quick search online, you're going to find thousands of uses for rose hips. They make everything from tea to honeys, jellies, um, syrup, baked goods. They even make alcohol from it. I've seen chili recipes for rose hips. There's just so much versatility in this food. And due to its medicinal benefits, I could see how cultures around the world have used this for many, many things. Now, as I so commonly like to say, I am A, not a doctor, and B, not a botanist. I'm simply sharing with you what I've learned. And I'm pretty confident that any one of you out there could go out into the forest and find rose hips. But now I want to share with you a few of the medicinal properties to rose hips. They have the highest levels of vitamin C found in the plant world, according to numerous researchers. This, coupled with an amount of antioxidants and vitamin E and vitamin A, these things are a superfruit. And nature knows this, and so do we. So do our ancestors. Rose hips have immune boosting properties. They're also astringent. They're anti-inflammatory, and they also have antimicrobial properties. So yes, you could use a tea made from rose hips to wash your wound in the wild to help stop infection. Now, rose hips have also been used to treat other infections, disorders in the kidney, in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, it's been used to treat diabetes even. High cholesterol, high blood pressure, it's been used to bring fevers down. It's an all-around immune-boosting superfood. Nature knows it. We know it. And it seems to be forgotten in today's world. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little video today on this very common discovery. And I hope that if you were unaware of this, that you learned something very beneficial today. Butterflies. I'm not sure if that camera picked those up. But if you did, I'm grateful. If you didn't, I hope it was a great refresher. And until next we meet, be well.